I, I, this is a sincere question. How can you charge a high fee for doing something you don't believe in? Yeah, there it has to be consistency here, and if you I believe that psychotherapy is nothing, how I can am you very can... grateful to you. I am because you see how important words are. Don't go away. Let's have a conversation. Why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> why do you think you think that you think that I think something which I don't think? I don't think psychotherapy is nothing any more than. Forgive me for thinking in the religious analogy. You take any. I won't even name. Let's take religion X which has millions of adherents and beautiful churches. And let's assume that I do not believe in that religion. Does that mean that I do not believe that that church is beautiful? Or people believe in that God? Or there are beautiful pictures in it? Or people feel better when they go there? Now what is it that I am selling? The point, that in response to your thing, I think that you wouldn't be inconsistent, but the people who didn't believe in that religion would be inconsistent to go and worship there. What I'm saying is... Which is a informed... Co but you said, how can I practice... How can I... No, let's get back to your question if I heard it. My you original know, question, was, if I how, may state it, please, as I recall it, was you have just disparaged psychotherapy and you are practicing psychotherapy and as I said, you said you charge a big fee for it. Well, now, okay. how can you do that? Now... Consistently. If, if, if we don't do anything... Please, I hope before 5.30 everybody is clear on this. <laughs> I think I have exalted psychotherapy. You think I have disparaged it. I think I have exalted it by taking it out of a realm in which it doesn't belong, in which it shouldn't compete. It is not like giving penicillin for a sore throat. It's not like cutting off a gangrenous leg. And I put it back to where I think it belongs, which used to be called the cure of souls. I put it back in the category of religion. Now, why you think that's disparaging? That only is a reflection on the fact that anything that's not called scientific or positivistic is a disparagement. No, I... I, 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 I think, accept that. I think, not only is it a good point, sir, but I don't know whether you are a psychiatrist or not. I think that... Many years ago, many of my colleagues said, Tom says, you are a traitor, which didn't bother me. You are killing psychiatry. Well, I wish I had. I wouldn't have minded it. <laughs> but in point of fact, I didn't. But I didn't have to wait too long because now they are committing suicide, which is much better. Because, because, and they are giving it also to social workers and to lay people because they are saying these are all real diseases and they're going to give pills. Well, if people want to take pills, they don't have to go to a psychiatrist and be stigmatized. They go to, they go to a family physician. And that's why young physicians no longer go into psychiatry. Because psychiatrists have given away their patrimony. The one thing that they did which other doctors didn't do, they spent more time with people and spent more and listen to them. Like Joseph Breuer. Joseph Breuer, from whom Freud learned psychoanalysis, was not a psychiatrist or a psychoanalyst. He was a physician who spent a lot of time with a rich person. Now, if you think, if, if you think, but let, I, I am not going to get you away from there. I do not think there is anything more precious in this world than two human beings taking each other seriously and talking to each other. If a parent does that to a child, with reasonable frequency, that child, in my opinion, can never get mental illness. It's that simple. Sir, thank you. I think you did add something in response to my question just I now hope so. that you did not say before, and that's the positive aspect of psychotherapy. Thank well, you. I tried thank to you. say that. Thank you. Now, let me thank you very, very much. Let's expand. Really, let's take it from here because I do not, I, I was afraid that there may be some such implication in this and in the title. I would really, as I said at the very beginning, I would now like to talk about how do we do psychotherapy. I'd be glad to how I do it. You can read about that. Uh, uh, one of the people in the audience was kind enough to bring this book by, which I think is one of my, it's, I like it, The Ethics of Psychoanalysis. I wrote this some 25 years ago. It's out of print. Uh, the first word is more accurate than the second. I had to call it something. It doesn't have too much to do with psychoanalysis, except in one sense. I use psychoanalysis in the classic, original sense, and that is to say that the psychoanalyst only does two things. Listens and talks. 
If he does anything else, he's not a psychoanalyst. He does not touch the patient. Now, I had a good deal of medical training before I went into psychiatry, and I think it's very interesting that there are now doctors who claim to be doctors, and you know how corrupt psychoanalysts became in, this, in America especially, claiming they're doctors, whose, whose, method, whose method required that they don't touch the patient. Well, such doctors never existed before in the history of the world. You're not supposed to even touch the patient or examine them. So, and it is, has to do with ethics, has to do what kind of values are you promoting, what are you selling.